Hey everyone, it's Dr. Romney. Welcome back to this YouTube channel on narcissism, narcissistic relationships, healing from narcissistic relationships. Have you ever had the fantasy of, I wish I could just put this entire relationship out of my mind. I wish it never happened to me. I wish I could just like have this perfect spotless mind and just go into the future having just sort of zoop, erased away everything that happened. Let's talk a little bit about the problem with that spotless mind. It's a fantasy. It's a fantasy I've encountered in numerous survivors. It's a fantasy I've had for myself. This idea of, I don't ever want to think about this relationship again. I want to pretend this relationship didn't happen in my life. People will reflect back on their narcissistic relationships, particularly romantic ones, and feel ashamed, embarrassed, angry at themselves. And who wants to feel that? Those aren't good feelings. I get that part. Healing, now healing, really when it happens, it means that you don't live in those negative feelings. It also means that you don't blame yourself and that you see it clearly. We certainly don't want you having to maintain the hypervigilance and anxiety and sadness and that general lack of safety, but you also cannot clear out everything that happens. It's not quite how the human mind works. There is no sort of power wash of the mind. However, some folks do try to sort of cordon off what happened in the narcissistic relationship through denial. And again, while I fully, fully understand it, it's not a good idea and here's why. One of the key tools for healing is discernment. And discernment is based in learning what happened. And that means remembering what happened, remembering the sensations of being gaslighted so we can have better responses or even at, the, at a minimum be aware of gaslighting, what gaslighting is so we can disengage. Reminders of what that relationship was about so we don't believe it can change. Many people think back on their narcissistic relationship and feel that they wish it didn't happen because it messes up how they think about love how they think about relationships, that if they recall what happened in the narcissistic relationship, that they will never put themselves out there again. And I would argue that you must recall what happened so you can put yourself back out there safely again. Going through narcissistic abuse and wanting to put it behind you doesn't mean that you forget what happened to you. Rather, it means that you pay attention and you are wiser. It's a tough balancing act between learning what these pa patterns are, learning that they are indeed patterns, that there's nothing you could have done or could do to change them, to become aware of how your own history, of how any of our own histories may make us more vulnerable to things like fawn responses and believing that love means over accommodating to another person and the good days and the bad days that confuse us. In a way, not forgetting is essential and necessary to move forward into a love story or into a life story that is actually what works for you and allows you to maintain your independent and autonomous self. The old saying goes that those who do not study history are doomed to repeat it. And that is absolutely true in the realm of narcissistic relationships. Many people say, I wish I could put this behind me because when I think about it and remember it, I feel cynical and I feel hardened by this experience, that I no longer trust people easily, that I'm suspicious of other people. I overinterpret smaller things now, like if a person's late, I wonder if they're narcissistic. I understand that. But the alternative is, I'm going to pretend none of that happened and just throw myself headlong into a new relationship may mean that you're all but guaranteed to get love bomb part two and do it again and have to go through it all again. And you wouldn't be the first person who has done this. The belief that people have that they do not want one person to ruin love for them and so they just put it out of their minds, it's not betrayal blindness as much as pure denial. And with time, and some motivation to forget some of it, memories can fade, they do fade, and we can forget. Many people think of their lives as being pre-narcissistic abuse and post-narcissistic abuse. Obviously, if you grew up with narcissistic parents, then there was no pre. 
But when we think of it, when we think of it as adult relationships, narcissistic adult relationships, this is where this pre post thing often comes up. There was a pre. There was a time of your life, maybe you did have a hope of a healthy, romantic, intimate, loving relationship. And then you have the narcissistic relationship and that paradigm shifts. But the spotless mind model doesn't work and is almost a guarantee of narcissistic relationship 2.0. Certainly some of us as little children had a romantic conception of love. And that pre-narcissistic relationship us did not have manipulation or gaslighting or invalidation or abandonment or betrayal built into it. Being wizened, learning from what happened isn't the same as being hardened. The wounds from these relationships may hurt, they do hurt, but they are also teachers and frankly sort of lighthouses in a way, warning you of the rocks on the shoreline that will bust up your hull. And we learn these things, we hold them, by having been through them. So while I understand wanting a spotless mind, believing that I just wish I could view the world as oh so cheery and happy and easy and breezy and good, I have no doubt there's people out there who haven't been through this. I've met them and they really do believe this and that's great, I'm happy for them. If you've been through this, you don't want this spotless mind because when people do this, this is when they roll into new the relationships. This is when they don't wait the 12 months. This is when they're like, I am going to forget what happened by getting into this new relationship. If we don't study history, we are doomed to repeat it. And this is one history you do not want to repeat. I hope that makes sense. Don't be mad at that mind that's not spotless. It's, the, it's always been said too, that messy houses always have the most interesting people living in them. Thanks again.